Giving you the right amount of thyroid hormone after thyroid surgery is a key to keeping you healthy. If you've had thyroid cancer, it may also be important for keeping you disease free. If you've watched our tutorial about hypothyroidism and thyroid hormone replacement, you'll already know that thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, is secreted by a gland at the base of the brain called the pituitary. And even though we occasionally need to check other hormones like T4 and T3, TSH remains the most sensitive indicator of how much thyroid hormone is in your bloodstream. If we're treating hypothyroidism without a history of thyroid cancer, your TSH needs to be normal. But sometimes patients with thyroid cancer require a suppressed TSH, and that depends on your age, the severity of your cancer, and other medical problems that you may have as well as your long-term follow-up status. If you have low-risk thyroid cancer after thyroidectomy, the goal is to keep your TSH in the low to mid-normal range, just like any other hypothyroid patient. You won't benefit from a suppressed TSH. But for patients with more aggressive thyroid cancer, TSH suppression may be the right thing to do. The reason is that thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, is also thyroid cancer stimulating hormone. If there's any suspicion that you have persistent thyroid cancer, or if you're at high risk for cancer recurrence, suppressing TSH will improve your odds of living disease free. If we have to suppress your TSH, we'll give you a slightly higher than normal dose of thyroid hormone. This causes very mild hyperthyroidism, and that's what keeps your TSH low. This mild hyperthyroidism is almost never symptomatic, and when done for the right reasons, any associated risks are offset by the benefits of improved thyroid cancer control. In some cases, even though TSH suppression may seem like a good idea, there are reasons we just can't do it. If you're older, have a history of irregular heartbeat like atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, or chest pain like angina, or if you have severe osteoporosis or for any reason you can't tolerate TSH suppression, risks will outweigh benefits and in these cases, the goal will be to keep TSH as low as possible without creating side effects and unmanageable symptoms. If you're pregnant or planning a pregnancy and you require thyroid hormone replacement for any reason, discuss this with your doctor especially if TSH suppression has been recommended for thyroid cancer. Depending on your cancer history, TSH suppression may still be safe during pregnancy, but the TSH target may need to be changed. Also, like every other hypothyroid patient, during pregnancy, you'll almost always require a substantial increase in your thyroid hormone dose. This can occur as early as week four of your pregnancy, and your baby needs this extra thyroid hormone for normal development. If you're thinking about getting pregnant, or if you're already in the family way, you and your doctor need to discuss this so you and your baby can stay healthy during your pregnancy. Even if TSH suppression is initially necessary, it may not need to be permanent. If you have no evidence of cancer on long-term follow-up, TSH suppression can often be relaxed and your TSH can be allowed to rise closer to normal or even into the normal range. To find out if that's the right thing for you, you have to ask your doctor. Thyroid replacement and the right TSH goal are important cornerstones for good thyroid cancer follow-up care. Measurement of a tumor marker called thyroglobulin and follow-up imaging are also keys to your long-term success. Make sure you understand these important points so your follow-up care can be as successful as possible. For thyroidparathyroid.com, I'm Dr. Stephen Hodak.